All right, let's get the latest uh, from our correspondent there in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, Isaac Lukando. Isaac, if you could just give us a quick update of uh, whether the South African officials have arrived and a little bit more about where the three accused are being incarcerated at the moment. Isaac, can you hear us? All right, let's see if we can get uh, our colleague Isaac Lukando to... Sure, if uh, you can hear me uh, properly, but let me just uh, give a quick update there. Um, indeed, as you just said, uh, it is expected that uh, the South African delegation will have arrived here and they are expected to help in determining some key questions about uh, uh, the fate of Tabo Besta. Uh, key among these things is whether it's going to be deportation or extradition that is going to be employed in getting uh, Tabo Besta back home to South Africa. Um, uh, uh, from a legal standpoint, uh, deportation would be perhaps the easier route to take uh, because it is uh, faster. Um, it is faster in terms of the process, uh, but extradition is also on the table and uh, also able to be achieved. Uh, but now the, the South African delegation will be key in in. Uh, uh, communicating with the Tanzanian authorities about what exactly they would like to see and they discuss the certain the particular circumstances uh, to be able to arrive at a conclusion remembering that while Besta is a convicted uh, uh, fella uh, uh, Na Dr. Nandipa's and uh, Zachary Alberto's case is a little bit different so those are what is going to have to be discussed with the South African delegation Isaac, I just want to talk about the events leading up to the arrest. Obviously, as uh, the details were coming through, the ministers of justice and police here were holding a press conference, but the information may have lagged behind. The Tanzanian officials, at what point did they realize that these were p people of interest? Because according to our police minister, they had sent their own uh, South African law enforcement officials to be also on the lookout for Bester and his accomplices. What do we know about the circumstances surrounding the arrest? Well, we do know that uh, the circumstances of the arrest has been a little bit, a bit hush-hush because um, the, they uh, tell us that they had been working with South African officials um, to, to arrest uh, Besta and the two accomplices. So we presume that in terms of information about whereabouts and the ability to identify them, uh, South Africa played a part in that. Uh, of course, we hear of Interpol uh, also being uh, in the fray. So uh, I believe that this to be a joint effort between the three entities here. And I believe that this is not the first time, but authorities here in, in Tanzania would have preferred, I presume, to, to be a bit hushed because of the sensitive nature of the operation, uh, so as to not tip off um, uh, Tabo and, uh, and his accomplices. And I think this may have led to, uh, to, the, to their capture in the end. Now, I'd just like to look at the possible route that they could have taken, how they reached Tanzania. Uh, Isaac, if you can just escape, I mean, explain to our viewers. We're going to put up a map of Arusha, but we know that Tanzania is surrounded by several countries uh, to the west, to the north. And uh, I'm looking at particularly Zimbabwe and Mozambique, which is where it's been rumored that they could have come from. So just take us through what you know, how people have uh, usually traveled into and through Tanzania. Well, there are a number of uh, entry routes that they could have used. Uh, Tanzania is uh, surrounded by around eight countries. So it could have 
be in any of those routes. But of course, knowing or having the information that they could, they pass through Zimbabwe. So there, there's the Zambian route, there is the Malawian route, and there's the Mozambican route. Each of those can bring them into uh, into Tanzania, at least in the south of Tanzania, and enable them to travel all the way to the north, as you see on the map. That Arusha is the northernmost uh, city, uh, very close to the Kenyan border. Uh, and so any of those routes would have enabled them to pass through. Now, this is not unusual to get um, illegal migrants, for example, coming in from Somalia, from uh, Ethiopia, passing through the country uh, on their way to South Africa. And usually they are, um, this is a syndicate that helps uh, illegal migrants uh, get a free passage through these countries, and particularly Tanzania, which has been has been used. So uh, they they would maybe pass through a certain section of Tanzania and get apprehended in in another. So we are assuming that if, for example, they came through Mozambique, the northern part of Mozambique, uh, through say Cabo Delgado, the Cabo Delgado province, they could have gotten into Tanzania. The road is um, is well paved. And they could have easily got into Dar es Salaam, where they made their, now their journey to, to, to Arusha. So there are a number of routes that they could have used. And because of the history of having syndicates that transport illegal migrants, this is a possibility in terms of uh, the, the access that they got to, to the route, in terms of even the, the disguises, the passports, and who possibly even, even funding. We, this is still at large and the authorities might be in a position after investigation, further investigation to tell us exactly how these individuals um, came across the funding to be able to, to go through, but, um, but also make it even as far as, uh, as far as Arusha, because usually some of, uh, most of the time they are apprehended. Uh, as we speak, there are thousands of uh, illegal immigrants that are uh, lounging in uh, Tanzanian jails. So most of them usually don't make it down to South Africa if they're passing through Tanzania. And that's a, a very interesting uh, point that you're raising there, Isaac, just in terms of the activities around those areas. So they were, we understand, 10 kilometers away from reaching Kenya. And we know that the closest there would have been Kilimanjaro, which is a very popular uh, tourist destination. So just in terms of uh, the ease of movement, if you're going as a tourist and they are also insurgents in and around those areas that's uh, uh, closer to Uganda as well. So has there been any possible talk of, um, you know, connections between illegal uh, armed groups who may have facilitated the crossing possibly from Mozambique into Tanzania? Um, I know it's early days yet, but is this a possibility, Isaac? Well, at this point, because of the, the many things that we don't know, this is still a, a, an open question where a, a flood of answers can come in and might even shock us because thus far, uh, Besta's, uh, Tabo Besta's story has, has shocked South Africa, has shocked Tanzanians, those who have become acquainted to his story. And Tanzanian authorities are well aware and have dealt with in the past with uh, uh, terrorists linked to the activity in northern Mozambique. So authorities here are very vigilant in terms of uh, uh, probing and ensuring that they they sniff out and uh, and and deal with any pos any possibility. Mm. Just last year, uh, the end of last year, six six individuals were were convicted and sent to 50 years in jail for for as part of a cons uh, terrorist conspiracy uh, connected with northern mozambique so uh, authorities here are very 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 vigilant yeah, and okay. the the route is patrolled as particularly in the south of the country uh, heavily patrolled uh, uh, and uh, but from dar es salaam to arusha it's usually uh, a route well traversed by tourists. So they could have gotten easy passage, but owing to the, 
closeness of Arusha to the border, this is where they probably could have been apprehended, maybe because of a roadblock or because of the police being tipped off. Um, so it is not unusual All and right. we As cannot it, rule out that. So we expect that authorities will be able, once the investigation is complete, to shed light on that. All right, Isaac, you know, no doubt we'll get those uh, details from you as well. Our correspondent in Dar es Salaam, Isaac Lukanda, and as he pointed out, close cooperation not only between South Africa and Tanzania, not only ASADIC members, but both countries are also very heavily involved in peacekeeping efforts in northern Mozambique.